right, so the situation is the following. My father's MacBook died. Uh, this is a mid-2012 MacBook, and uh, the SSD actually forgot something pertaining to the uh, APFS partition. Fortunately, there doesn't seem to be any utility to actually recover APFS, but I'm very glad Apple makes us actually use it and disallows HFS Plus, which is way more supported and has way more recovery features. Uh, but so anyway, uh, problem is I, um, I don't have a charger, right? So I do have some in the box of chargers, right? Which are, this is a lot of MagSafe 2. And, but so I did find this MagSafe 1 adapter, which is 65 watts, if I'm not mistaken. 60 watts, right? And uh, where does it say? It's supposed to be... It's supposed to be 16.5 volts, is it? Yes, it is. 16.5 at 3 point something amps. Uh, so, yeah, I could try dremeling this out or heating it up, right? I have actually a guide on I fix it. If you heat these up a lot, uh, the plastic welds will separate a lot easier. But it's really a pain in the ass. Uh, really does take quite some time. And so I'm thinking, why not? I separated the wire. Was a bit busted here, added some heat shrink. Uh, yeah, so I've done this for the MagSafe 2 and tested it out. Why not check out how well this works with MagSafe 1, right? Unfortunately, I'm a bit hesitant to go full 20 volts on this, although MagSafe 1 also supported like 19 point something volts for the 85 watt adapter. Or was it 80? I don't know. Case in point, I'll uh, go 15 and let's see if... Uh, that upsets the Mac, right? Because 16.5 to 15, one and a half volts drop over this under no load might uh, might trip it into thinking the wire is broken. Although, who knows? Let's see. So, uh, right quick, these actually have a very nice safety features, these chargers. So they have a known resistor in line and or, or even a voltage divider and they only put out a very low voltage or a lower voltage but at for sure a very limited current over this right and only when the mac applies another known resistor does this enable full power right so in case this is broken somewhere it's not going to set fire to your house so that's nice apparently macs don't really care too much for that you could just give them full voltage and they'll work or at least the MacBook Pro I have does. Right? Let's see. Let's go over the entire process. I should have a little baggie of PD and QC triggers here. In my box of wonders. And we'll have to see which one's which because they're not really all that well marked. What I'm looking for is... Um, yeah, I could use a YZX one, why not? So this is 20, technically 5, 5 and 20, 5 and 20 I think as well, yeah. Well, technically this one does have all the voltages we need, but yeah, now let's just go for this one, why not? Plus, I haven't used these before. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's let's test this out first. Okay, so shouldn't get 50. Now we should actually get 12 now. And we are. Yeah, not bad. So let's change this over to 15. Some kind of a something here. Don't think it's a problem, but anyway. So yeah, let's see what it does now. Yeah. 
not super bad, I will say. Okay, so that's sorted. What else? Yeah, let's just uh, connect the um, MagSafe wire and I think that's it. What I dislike about this trigger is that um, it has awfully tiny pads. So what I might do is actually scratch the... Oh, first of all, let's reinforce the Type-C connector because they're super stingy on solder. Yeah, so let's do that first and, um, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so the other side looked a bit better from what I remember. Yeah. The other side is actually okay. Good. So, uh, negatives on the left, which is now on the right. And I think I'll go, I think I'll go ahead and uh, scratch myself a pad on the bottom. So if, uh, if this is negative, then I should be fine all the way over here I'm not against this so far. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. All right. Let's head on over to the hot air station. Yeah, about this much. Let's add some silicone as well. Fuck.
let's just scrub as much of this as we can. That's fine, I'll uh, hit this in the freezer and then we'll just cut off the um, cut off an opening for the Type-C port. Alright, so the silicone was perhaps not my greatest idea. Uh, this port does actually have some holes on this side and it did leak, leak silicone on the inside. And so now I actually moved the charger over here to be able to use a more shit wire which I kind of dropped. Yeah, so I have these shorter, more crap wires. Anyway, so I'll uh, just set this in here and hopefully everything will dry up nicely and uh, yeah, still make contact. We can check on this side. Okay, so we're getting 15 and plus is the wire and negative is the sheet, so that's fine. All right, now we can check to see what my dad's MacBook does. Shoo, boom. Yeah, not liking it. And it's definitely not charged to 100%. Hmm. Does it want like 16.5? Yeah, I don't know. Let's see what happens if we turn it on. Oh, it does actually use it. So maybe it's just upset over the data? I don't know. definitely pulling some power from it and it can't boot because there's nothing on it so yeah i think that's a decent enough success oh and it's charging now wait yeah 40 watts even more what exactly is booting right now is beyond me because I formatted the drive, but anyway. Yeah, but it does seem to work. So type C to max safe one, 15 volts for the 65 watt adapter. And again, uh, the adapter type is stored in the one ch in the chip that's in here that also controls the LED. And the Mac communicates with that over the one wire, tells it to turn on the green or the red LED, and also gets the, um, the charger information. And this is sounding very bad. But I think it's because of the charger, right? I did open this, it's not it's a bazeus charger which looks very nice on the outside has everything you want all the protocols but completely shit inside so oh and the light turned on yeah how nice anyway so that's been it if you have any questions leave them down in the comments what the fuck is this booting very interesting anyway bye